I think it's therapeutic to watch this flight. If you're not interested and if you find it boring, skip to the 5 minute and 30 second mark. Thank you.
się na lotnisku Chopina w Warszawie, gdzie jest godzina 21.10 czasu lokalnego temperatury. I've said it a few times. I've written about it before. I hate flying. But uh, after an hour and 25 minute flight, I'm here in Warsaw, Poland for the very first time. The flight was smooth. We had little treats. Uh, we had some, had some coffee. I had a little, a little pastry and some uh, corn nuts. Remember those corn nuts from Pilgrim School? We used to gobble those bad boys up. And um, now I'm here at the airport. So I'm staying at the airport at the uh, Marriott, the airport Marriott. So I just have to walk 250 feet from the baggage claim to get to my room. So I'm home, baby, let's go. Oh, and the thing that tripped me out is um, coming from Denmark, I don't have to go through customs. It's kind of a little weird thing that just like freaks me out. It happened to me in Sweden and it happened to me here in Poland as well. You just slide through um, the countries if you're coming from Denmark, like you're good. So I just slid on into Poland, no customs, no nothing. Here we go. So I've been looking all around for the uh, uh, the Marriott and I had to step outside. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. where is the Marriott and bam, there it is right there. All right. So don't have to go anywhere. I just exited the uh, the airport and I'm, I'm already here. I'm already home. That's what's up. Loving it. Let's go. So we walk through the parking lot, follow the signs. Come on now, show me that sign. I can't see it. There we go. Take the elevator. Take the elevator. I smell smoke. Parking level. I have no idea. Level two. Oh, this is level two. Maybe level four then. Six. This is wild. It says window elevator it says go over there. All right. This whole man, this is a mystery right here. This is this ain't too cool. Does it say go downstairs? I'm getting mixed messages. It says go straight and there's nothing on this level. Man, don't tell me the dog line. Um, Marriott closed down and it's nothing but a... Look, I think those signs used to say the Marriott because they're green over there. But they're not illuminated. I'm going over here. I'm going way down here to see what's going on. This is all bad. This is all bad. But they have something over here. What does this say? A terminal. I don't see anything that says a. By now, I've seen this sign plenty of times. It says exit. That means exit. I definitely don't want to get stuck on an elevator. Doesn't even work, huh? I hear something moving. Yeah, this is kind of uncool. Let's see what it says. Level two. Man, what are we on? Level four? Wow, this is three minutes into this video. I'm lost. I'm trying to find the courtyard. I've only gone up one floor. All right, we're just gonna walk up. You can't walk up. That won't allow you to. Look, it's been blocked off. The whole thing. Here, people come. 
Nah, man, that's not cool. I don't see anything. I don't see anything that says a hotel. But it, I knew there wasn't gonna be much over here, but I was hoping for something. I see nothing. Let's go back over here to this elevator. At least there's some words over here. At least there's a sign that says something remotely indicating a, a hotel. Man. All right, I'm gonna turn this off until I, until I get to the location. Now this is crazy because there are like, there could be live wires just hanging down from the ceilings and all. Like, man. I just saw some live wires, or excuse me, I saw wires hanging down. That doesn't mean they're live, but what is going on? See, it's got, it says elevator. I see wind, I see, boy, oh boy. So I just pressed up, I'm gonna press it again. Try to go, try to go to the level six. All right, I'm turning this off. I've been filming too much. All right, here we go. Wish me luck. I think I found it, y'all. I made it. It's the top floor. All right, so that's it. Mystery solved. There's the moon up there. There's the airport. I'm right here, mystery solved. That was some nonsense trying to get, I mean, what I, was I trying to get out of the airport? No, the, I'm staying at the airport. I, I, I was just trying to get right here and I couldn't get here. My goodness, but now I'm here. And now that I'm here, I'm very happy. The Marriott is a great place to stay, a great hotel around the globe and uh, for what I have, uh, what I can see, what I can tell right now, this is great. Except I would have preferred one large bed, not two beds, but it is what it is. So there it is. All right, check me out. Welcome to Poland, Poland, Warsaw, Poland. This is it, Centrum. Center of Poland. Yeah, that one. Alright, so we're much to see but it's an open window
Uwierz Pan Jezusa Chrystusa. Jezus Chrystus jest Twój Zbawiciel. Opamiętaj się.
boss. Got to figure this one out. For the record, this is being recorded in Los Angeles, and here is the story of my experience in Poland and how the spirit of 10-9 led me or followed me um, to Poland, but it also led me. So I was in Poland and I was... I was watching YouTube. I was watching Nick Cannon and Dr. Greg Carr's discussion on Cannon's class. I usually put informational or um, discussions on so I can listen to it in the background, sort of my white noise. I looked at the computer and I, although I had seen this video before, I hadn't notice that it was uploaded on October 9th, 2018. So there was 10-9 right there. And in the discussion that Nick Cannon and, and Dr. Greg Carr have, uh, Nick Cannon even mentions his birthday. He was born on October 8th. So there's 10-8. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Now there's some great information in there and I would definitely uh, recommend anyone watch that video. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. So as I was in Poland, um, I had already visited Warsaw. I had taken the train into the city. I had had my lunch there in Warsaw. And then I returned back to the hotel. And I tried to th figure out what was I going to do with my next 24 hours in Poland. I thought of Auschwitz. I had spoken to a friend uh, through Facebook who is of Polish descent. Her name is uh, Jessica, and she told me head to Krakow. So I started doing some research into Krakow, and I discovered that Auschwitz is located there. So I thought of going to Auschwitz because I know the history of the Holocaust. I have uh, Jewish friends, acquaintances, and my former teachers were also Jewish, including Mr. Alan Kaplan, Mr. Barry Smolin, and Mr. Greg Baton, all at Alexander Hamilton High School. And all of these men informed me uh, in part or um, completely of the Jewish experience in some way or the other. I'd have to say uh, Mr. Smolin more so uh, than the others, but uh, that's another discussion. And I was interested in visiting um, Auschwitz because, you know, it's important history. 
and I had already visited the slave uh, castle, Cape Coast in uh, Ghana, as well as Elmina. But I was interested in the Holocaust experience in Poland because I wanted a um, a deeper, richer um, travel experience than just going to, you know, for Instagram photos and YouTube videos and what whatnot. Anyway, I decided on um, traveling to Krakow based upon Jessica's um, suggestion. And uh, I had my sights on going to Auschwitz um, to see the real history. Um, I understood that it could be mentally draining and because it's a devastating history, but um, I was prepared for that. Um, and so I thought, all right, I'm going to Auschwitz. I discovered that it's difficult, extremely difficult for me to get to Auschwitz from the airport in Krakow. So the plan was to fly from Warsaw to Krakow and then make my way to Auschwitz. There are no direct buses. There are no trains. I would have had to rely on taxis. It's more than an hour from the airport, and I would have had to have paid round trip. Plus, I would have had to have asked the taxi driver to wait on me for an hour or two while I toured Auschwitz. The admission is free. Once you arrive at Auschwitz, you can tour uh, on your own. But, yeah, it just wasn't going to happen. So I was disappointed because that wasn't going to happen. So I tried to salvage my vacation or salvage my trip and think to myself, what, what else am I going to do? And somehow um, I realized through my uh, research of Krakow and what else I could do that it was easy, extremely easy for me to get to Oscar Schindler's factory and... That's where I directed my attention. I said, I'm going to go to Oscar Schindler's factory. And I thought, that is a worthy location. Um, if I'm not going to Auschwitz, it's historically rich, um, absolutely important, and what a wonderful story. If you watch Schindler's List, then you know what I'm referring to. Now, in my case, I watched Schindler's List in about 2017 or 2018, but that was... 20 some odd years after I had learned about Schindler's List. Um, I remember being in high school, learning about the movie, being uh, recommended to watch it, but I never got around to doing it. And in 2016, 17, or maybe 2018, I was in Saudi Arabia and Schindler's List popped up on Netflix. And while I was in Saudi Arabia, I had the time I remembered the importance of the film, and I decided to watch it. And, you know, there was no preparation. I mean, it just popped up on the Netflix timeline. I didn't have any advance warning, or they didn't say, Schindler's List is coming to Netflix next week, or, you know, I wasn't prepared. I just happened to check Netflix, and there it was. And I gravitated towards it. I watched it. I was moved by the story, of course. My interest was piqued. And then something curious happened. I thought to myself, I want to know more about this man, Oscar Schindler. This was completely random. So I did a quick wiki um, search, and I discovered something very interesting about Mr. Schindler. And then it all made sense to me why I had watched the movie and... I mean, the timing of it, I didn't, I couldn't explain, but it was, it, there was something to it. And I could, I knew then that 10-9 was leading me because I discovered through that Wikipedia search that Oscar Schindler died on October 9th, 10-9, in the year 1974. I had learned that while I was in Saudi Arabia. And... When I found myself in Poland recently on my journey, then, and I realized that, oh, I won't be able to go to Auschwitz, but I will be able to go to uh, Oscar Schindler's factory. I thought to myself, oh, 10-9 is going to put me where Oscar Schindler, 10-9 is going to put me where I need to be. 
And I don't need to be in at Auschwitz, but I need to be where Oscar Schindler was because of what the man did, because of the character of that man, because of the decisions he made to save the lives of the Polish Jews. That is what resonated with me and what and where I needed to be. So in the spirit of 10-9, I made my way to Oscar Schindler's factory. So there it is, 10-9. Peace.